So in this lesson, we are going to look at how to graph functions or graphing functions or just a simple way how we're going to draw functions. OK. So if we take a graph, for example, so if we have a look at this, so a graph has two axes. So it has the x axis, which is the horizontal line, and then it has the vertical axis. And then it has each of these uh, sections. OK, so on the right hand side here, you have the positive values for X and on the left hand side here, you have the negative values for X. Um, on the Y axis, on the top here, you have the positive values for Y and on the bottom, you have the negative values for Y. So every point on this graph will have what are called coordinates associated with it. So if I was to take this point here. OK, that's going to have two coordinates associated with it. It will have the X coordinate, OK, which is one. And we can write it like this. So you have two coordinates. So you have the X part and then you have the Y part. So, for example, this point here would be the point one one. So if I go along the X axis, it's going to be one on the X axis. So I come out one and then I go up one and it's one on the Y axis. So that's that point right there on the on the graph. So in order for us to be able to draw a function, we have we need these x and y values in order to be able to plot the points on the graph. So let's just rub this out now. And this is just the general kind of layout for, for a point. You have an x value and you have a y value, and the x values on the left, the y values on the right, the x-axis has the x values, the y axis has the y values. So if we take it, so this is a common type of uh, question something that you need to be able to do in relation to your junior cert. So you need to be able to graph a function. So it gives you the domain. So remember, if we think about, we have here two functions. So we have function one and then we have function two. So function two here. And what it's asking you to do is to take these functions and to graph them on this graph. So in order to be able to get our, our y value and our x value, we have to have a number of inputs. And this is the domain. And it tells us here what the domain is. So it says the domain or the input, which is x, will be, um, so, the, so the input is greater than or equal to minus 3. OK, so the input's going to start at minus 3. So minus 3. And it goes all the way up. It's less than or equal to 3. So it's minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. And then you're going to have 1, 2, and 3. So these are the inputs, or what's called the domain. And we get that from reading this. Uh, this inequality here. So this is this is the range, if you like. So what we do then is we take our functions. So we have this. This is our first function, so function one. So graph the following functions in the domain. So and this is the domain or the inputs. Uh, this is our function, and this is our second function. So what we need to do now is we need to get the. So these are the x values. So we need to work out what are the corresponding y values. So for example, we can just put in our x values here into our table. So we have minus three minus 2, minus 1, we have 0, we have 1, 2, and then 3. Okay, so now what we have to do is get the corresponding y value for each of these. And we do that by putting the input or the domain through the function, and then we will get our range or our output values. So if we take the first one, so this is going to be uh, here. So this one is going to be 2 times bracket minus 3 minus 3. Okay, so 2 times minus 3 is minus 6, and then minus 6 minus 3 will give me minus 9. Okay, so that's our first that's our first uh, pair of coordinates. So you have minus 3 minus 9. Okay, and then what we want to so remember this is the this is going to be x value and this is the y value. 
So we want to plot this point on the graph. So the x value is minus 3, so we come across here, so here's minus 3, and the y value is minus 9, so it's down here. So that's our first point. Okay, minus 3, minus 9. So then we do with the next one, so the next input value is x, we put it through our function, is, is minus 2, so it's going to be 2 times minus 2, minus 3. So 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. And then minus 3 is going to be minus 7. So again, this is minus 1, minus 7, minus 1, minus 7. And we want to plot this on our graph. So the x value is minus 1, which is here. And the y value is minus 7. That's down here. So that's the second point. Then we do the next point, which is 0. So this is just going to be 2 times 0, minus 3. So 2 times 0 is 0, and then that's just minus 3. So this point is going to be 0, minus 3. So again, the x value is 0, and the y value is minus 3. It's going to be somewhere here like this. OK, so that's that point. And then the next one is, so we put this in, so it's going to be 2 times 1 minus 3. So 2 times 1 is 2. And then minus 3 will just leave us with minus 1. So we our x value is minus 1. And our y value, so our x value is 1, should I say? It's here. And our y value is minus 1, which will be here. So it'll be roughly around here. Then we move down to our next one, so it's going to be 2 times 2, minus 3. So 2 times 2 is 4, and then minus 3 will give me just 1. Okay, so it's going to be x is 2, y is 1, so it's going to be here, like so. So x is 2, y is 1, and then this last one then is going to be 2 times 3, minus 3. So 2 times 3 is 6 minus 3 is just going to leave me with 3. So it's 3, 3. So we go x is 3, and then we go up 3. So it's going to be roughly around here. OK, so that's our, we've taken all of these points, and we have plotted them on the graph. OK, so we have 1, sorry, 1, 1 minus 1. We have 2, 1. And then we have three three. So they are they are all our all of our points. So we have our input. So this is our range here. This is sorry, no, this is our domain, should I say, our inputs, and then this here is our range, our output values, and then these are the individual coordinates for each of these points. And then these are each of the points plotted on the graph, like so. And when you're plotting, when you're creating a graph like this, you would use graph paper as well. So then what you want to do is you want to draw a line of best fit through uh, all of the points like so. Okay, so that's the first that's the first part um, of graphing the function. So we've taken this function here. And we've used this domain here. And we've graphed a function. We've graphed a function on the graph. So the next one then is we want to graph the second function, which is this guy here. So we want to we want to graph this. So again, what we do is we first of all put in our domain. So it's minus three, minus three, minus two, minus one, uh, zero, one, two, three. Okay, so we, we put in our value, so x, so we put it into the function in order to get our y value. So this is going to be uh, minus 3 to be squared, minus 3 times minus 3, and then it's going to be minus 3. And minus 3, so let me see. So if we take... Okay, so let's put these in. So we have 
So we have bracket minus three to be squared minus two times bracket minus three, and then minus three. Okay. Uh, so minus three to be squared is going to be plus nine. Minus two times minus three is plus six. So nine plus six is 15. And then minus two is going to be, sorry, minus three is going to be 12. Okay, so that's our first coordinate. So we have minus three, minus 12. So we have minus three, So minus three plus 12. Okay, so that's gonna be, let's say somewhere up here, minus three plus 12. So that point will be roughly up here somewhere. Uh, the next one then, it's gonna be minus two squared, minus two times minus two, minus three. So minus two to be squared is four, minus two times that is four, four and four is eight, and then minus three will give me five. Okay, so the second point is going to be minus 2, minus 2, 5. So minus 2, 5 would be roughly here. Then the next one, so that's going to be uh, 0 squared, um, minus 0, minus 3. So that would give us uh, 0, minus, so it be minus 3. Okay, so it's going to be the x-axis is 0. And then we're down here on minus three, which would be roughly around here. That's where the that next point will be. The next one then is uh, one to be squared minus two times one. Minus three. So one to be squared is one minus two times, that's minus two. So one minus two will give me minus one. And that's going to be minus four. So one, so it's going to be one minus four, which would be down roughly down here. One minus four, so roughly around there. So the next one is going to be two to be squared. Minus two times two, minus three. So two to be squared is four. Minus two by that's going to be minus two, so that would give us two, and then minus three, so that would leave us with minus one. So again, we have two, which is here, and we have minus one, which will be roughly around here. Okay, so that's this, that's the that point, and then the last point, it's just going to be three to be squared, minus two times three, minus three. So three to be squared is nine, minus two times three is six. So nine minus six is three, and then minus three is minus six. So that would be three minus six. So it's gonna be three is here. So we have three here, and we have minus six is down here. And let me just double check that one now. Sorry, that one would be uh, zero. So that would just cancel out and be zero. So it's going to be uh, three times to, three to the power two is nine. Uh, minus two times three is minus six. So nine minus six will leave me with three, and then three minus three will leave me with zero. So it's going to be three, which is here, and then zero, which will be roughly around here. So then if we let me just get rid of this out of the way for a sec. So if we join these up, then so it's going to be kind of going to get again use a ruler to do this and join them up and uh, okay so you have something that looks kind of like this and then it's going to go up like that like so okay so you get this kind of a like a curve that's in the graph so that's basically how you graph a function. So what you want to do is, first of all, identify what your domain is, write out your domain. You want to make a table. So you'll have the input, which is the domain, is the values from the domain. You want to have the working out of the function. So that's when you put the value of x into the function. And then you want to have the corresponding y value. 
okay, which is the, the output or the range. And then you use each of these to get an X and Y coordinate so that you can plot each point on the you know on the on the graph it needs an x and a y coordinate on the graph and then what you do is you plot all of your points so work out all of your points for your function plot each of your points and then graph them and then put each of the points on a graph and then graph it out like so so what i want to look at now is so so this is this is basically how you graph a function so we want to look at some of the common shapes that come up. So if we have a look at this, so we have a straight line here, we have this kind of a curved line here. So there's other different patterns that can show up depending on the type of function that you have. And that's what I just want to spend a little bit of time looking at now because you need to know how to do this. So the first one is this kind of a shape where you get like a line. So you get a linear shape and that's kind of similar to what we've got here. So we have a straight line and um, generally the functions that will give you a straight line. So if you have a look at this as a function, y is equal to 3x plus 1. So generally the, the x value or the output value will have a power of 1. Okay, so remember this is 3x and x is raised to the power of 1. So x to the power of 1. Remember when x is on its own like that, it's raised to the power of 1. So when you have a graph like this, and when you get your x values and you plot them against your y values, you generally will get a straight line like this. So this one has a, so for example, this is a positive slope here. Okay, so when the number that's in front of the x is positive, you'll get this like a positive slope like this. And if the number in front of it is negative, you'll get like a, a slope that goes down like this, or goes in this direction. So if you have for example, a negative value. So let's say if this was minus three instead of plus three, you would have uh, this kind of a slope. Okay, so this is positive and then this is negative. So again, this is this is a linear, it's a linear function. Why is it a linear function? Because the x value has a power of one. Okay, it's no greater than a power of one. If we look at the next one, so this is what's called a quadratic. And generally, a quadratic will give you a shape like this when you plot the x and the y coordinates with each other, or you'll get a shape that's like this. So this, this is so positive, smiley face, negative, like sad face. So generally, what does a function look like? A quadratic function, so it's like this. So y is equal to 3x to the power of 2 plus 4x minus 1. And it's a quadratic if the x value, so if one of the x or the x values in the expression has a power greater, has a power of two. Okay, so it's linear if it's a power of one. If it's a power of two, then it's what's called quadratic. So when you work out your coordinates by inputting your x values and getting your y values, and if you plot them on a graph, you'll get something that's like this. And if we have a look at this, for example, so this here. The one that we just plotted is a quadratic because this is x to the power of 2 is, is in it and you can see that it has that kind of shape so we can see that we can see that the value in front of x squared is just positive one so you have this positive uh, shape in the slope so a positive or, or smiley face so that's the shapes of a quadratic the next one is like a cubic so a cubic function, so if you get something, a cubic will have this kind of a shape. So it also has a positive one, and it also has a negative one, like so. So generally, this is the layout of a cubic function. And um, so the x value will have a power of 3. That's what makes it cubic. And again, depending on the, the value of, if it's plus, if it's a negative or positive integer or a number that's in front of the x cubed value, it'll either have these two types of shapes. If this number is positive, it'll have a shape like this when you plot the x and y coordinates with each other. And if this is number here is negative, you'll have this kind of a shape here. So you'll have this negative, this negative shaped value here, like so. So again, that's what's known as a cubic function. And then the last kind of function then that you will come across is something that looks like this. So this is what's called an exponential function. So basically what happens is you get a slope that kind of starts off like this and then it grows exponentially. 
And in order for you to, how do you know if it's going to be an exponential slope? Well, generally you'll have a term that's in your expression that's going to be to that's going to be raised to the power of your your domain or your input value. So raised to the power of x, or in this case, the input value is t. So when you have something like this, this kind of a term inside your expression, and what will happen is you'll get this like exponential function that looks like that. So that is basically how to graph functions. And again, you need to be comfortable and you need to be able to do this for your junior cert. Okay, thank you for listening.